Praise the Lord. My name is Prophetess Anita Swain, and I am with Joy in the Wilderness Ministries, a ministry that cares about you. This we're doing for YouTube, just to recap from our home what our message was on Sunday. This is just some words just to give you, just to encourage you, to let you know that no matter what your circumstance is, no matter what your situation is, no matter what you're going through in life, that as long as you trust in God and the God that I serve is his name is Jesus Christ. As long as you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, he can deliver you out of all your circumstances. You know, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. I want to let you know today, no matter what you're going through, God is able to deliver you. You may be at home. You may not have any money in your pocket. You may be facing foreclosure. You may be uh, not having a job. You may be sick in your body, but I want you to know that Jesus is a problem solver and Jesus is a healer. My old pastor used to sing a song, Jesus is a healer. The world don't believe it. Jesus is a healer. He heals all the time. Heal the sick, raise the dead. There's nothing to be afraid for Jesus is a healer. He heals all the time. I want to let you know that God is working on your behalf. If all you can do is just say Jesus, he can change your situation in the blink of an eye. You know, the world changes. The world spins on the axis. The world is always changing, but I serve a God that never changed. He He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. All you have to do is trust in him. All you have to do is call upon his name and he will be right there. I just want to recommend to you, if you don't know God, if you've never given your life to God or to the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to recommend Jesus on you to you today to let you know that God is able to work your situation out. You are not hopeless. You don't have to go to suicide. You don't have to go to weed. You don't have to go to drugs. You don't have to go to whatever. You don't even have to go to illicit sex. All you need to do is go to Jesus. Go to the throne of grace. God will come and he will deliver you. God will come. He will snatch you out of whatever you're going through. He will come and help you. I just want to encourage you today that Jesus, he's working on your behalf. You may not feel like anybody loves you. You know, sometimes I felt in my life that nobody loved me. You know, you can have kids, you can have sisters, you can have brothers, you can have family, but sometimes you still don't feel love. You still feel like nobody understands what you're going through. But I want you to know right now, this instant, this moment, whenever you're hearing this word, that Jesus cares about you and he will help you. Just call on him. But we're going to go back to what we were talking about on Sunday. On Sunday, I got a chance to minister. And the word that the Lord had me preach was coming from Isaiah, the 39th chapter. And it says here, I'm going to kind of skip around it because I know we're, we're brief on time. It says, and Hezekiah was glad of them and showed them all the spices I'm sorry. And Hezekiah was glad of them and showed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious, precious ornament and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men? From whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. And he said, What have ye seen in thine house? And Hezekiah said, All that is in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. 
Behold, the days come, and all that is in thine house, and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, said the Lord. And of thy sons thou shalt issue from thee, which thou shalt begat, shall they take away. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace, in the house of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. He said, Moreover, for there shall be peace and truth in my days. And what the Lord had me um, bring out on Sunday morning, for those that weren't in the service, is don't show what's in your house. Be careful who you show what's in your house. Here we hear about Hezekiah. He had been sick unto death. He had got a word, a prophecy from the Lord through Isaiah saying to set his house in order for he was going to die. But Hezekiah, what he did when he got the death sentence, instead of him saying, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go on and die. I'm, I'm not, I'm going to give up. I'm going to not believe that God is going to work things out for me. What he did was he humbled himself and he prayed. And because God, he humbled himself and prayed unto the Lord, the Lord added 10 more years to his life. Now, some of you, as we were mentioning early, you may be going through some sicknesses or disease. I've been through sicknesses and disease in my life. And back in 1993, I was given three years to live. Well, this is 2011 now, and I'm still living. You know, the doctors had told me that I was going to be a vegetable. They told me I wasn't going to live. They told me that I was going to have to go in a nursing home. They told me that I'll, I wouldn't be able to take care of my child. I didn't raise my child. She's 19, going on 20 years old. Then had another child that's eight years old. They wanted me to take all kind of uh, radiation treatments, um, do all kind of stuff. And then they said even with the treatment, I would only live six months um, past whatever I would live without the treatments. But I'm standing here today. I'm not going to say that everything is totally gone away, but I am a testament to the grace of God because it was no goodness of my own. It wasn't anything that I did, but it was because of God's grace. It was because of his mercy. It is because of the goodness of God that I'm still alive and in the land of the living today. Now, some of you may have had a death sentence. Your death sentence may not be sickness. It could have been not having any money. It could have been poverty. It could have been that you've been evicted from your home and you're watching me or at the library or on the internet on the library. It could be a relationship. It could be a divorce. It could be whatever your situation that you feel that has caused death in your life. But I want to tell you and give you the same word that the Lord gave me through one of the prophetess that was a friend of mine. The word she gave me was, you shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I want you to know today that no matter what your death sentence has been, you shall live and not die and de declare the works of the Lord. I want you to speak to your body and say live. I want you to speak to your finances and say live. I want you to, to speak to your mind and say live. You may be going through some things with your mind where you're hearing voices and you feel like you're about to lose your mind and you're about to have to take all kind of medicine to get your mind straight. But I want you to tell your mind to live. I want you to tell your body and your high blood pressure and diabetes to live and to line up with the word of God. For God's word says that you're healed. You're everything that God said that you are. God did not send sickness nor disease to come to take you out. But if God allows a situation to come in your way, the Bible says he's not going to put more on us than we can bear. That means there must be something about you that God can believe that you can bear whatever you're going through. And he will give you the strength. He will give you the 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 stamina. He will give you the wisdom on how to get whatever you need to get 
with his strength, with his power, with his care. And if it's something that you can't do yourself, believe me, God can step in and miraculously send a blessing. You know, the song says late in the midnight hour, God is going to turn it around. Some of us is at our midnight hour. When I got my death sentence, I was at my midnight hour. But you know what? God came and turned it around. Well, we're going back here to Hezekiah. Where he made his mistake at, he was so happy. He was so blown away that God told him, I'm going to give you 15 more years. You're going to see the fulfillment of everything that I promised you. Some of you have promises of God. Some of you, God said that he was going to do things in your life. Well, God's word is yea and it's amen. If God said he was going to bless you, he going to bless you. If God said he was going to going to give you this, he going to give you to that. God is not a liar. God said, I am not a man that I should lie. If God has said something in his word, he's going to do it. But God wants to know that while you're going through the process, in order for me to give you the thing that I promised you, can I trust you that you're not going to lose your faith. Can I trust you? You're not going to cast away your confidence. Can I trust you that you're going to go on and do what I told you that you're going to do? God wants some people that he knows that he can trust. Can God trust you? Oh yeah, you may be, may be going through something, but I want you to know, keep your faith your trust in God. If the old saints used to have a song say, if I can't do anything, I will wave my hand. I want you to know, if you can't do anything about your situation, wave your hand and say, yes, Lord. It's a commercial on TV. They said, aren't you sure? And if you're sure, you see the people, they're dancing, they're talking, and they're raising their hands. Well, that's what we got to do with God. We've got to be sure and steadfast in our situation that God is going to deliver us. We need to be sure enough that we're going to raise our hands because we know that we serve somebody that is not going to fail us. Oh, yes, sometimes the governor may fail you. Friends may fail you. Family members may fail you. The president may even fail you. But one thing I know about the Lord, he never fails you. Keep your trust in God. He will never fail you. But we're going to go back here to Hezekiah because we only have about three more minutes. He went, he was so happy about that God had delivered him. He showed everything that was in his house. But see, what happened was he showed it to the wrong people. He showed what he had to the enemy. He showed it to um, the king of Babylon. He um, sent papers out. He, he gave, he showed things to people that he knew that were not really for him. And he showed them his blessing. And so when, when the Lord seen what happened, but he sent Isaiah to him to say, what is this that you done? You know, these people, they came in acting like they was glad that Hezekiah had recovered of his illness. Really, they wasn't glad. They heard about it. That's what the Bible says in Isaiah the 39th chapter, verse 1. They heard that he got healed, but they really didn't want him healed. They want to see him die. Who is in your life that wants to see you die? Who's in your life that wants to see you fail? Who is in your life that don't want to see anything happen good for you? Who is in your life that's acting like they're a friend, but they're really not a friend? And what they're doing is they've been strategically set by the devil in your life and to come and to rob you, to steal your dreams, to steal your hopes, to steal your aspirations, to steal all the things that you want that God has promised you for. Have you ever told somebody, <coughs> excuse me, have you ever told somebody about a job? And that person, you was all happy about getting a job and you knew you was a shoe in for that job. But then that person that you told about that job, they beat you to the job before they got there before you even got there and got hired. Well, that was a person that was not your friend. They were strategically sent in your life to keep you from whatever blessing that you were supposed to get. God was saying on Sunday, 
get rid of the phony folks. The people that come, act like they're your friends, smile in your face, they talk about you behind your back. The old world's had a song saying that those were the backstabbers. Get the backstabbers out of your life. Eat it, Abu Shanda. 